Hello guys and welcome back to another Entrouded video. This one's going to be a little bit different to the normal guides. For this we're going to be doing a time lapse of this particular build. But before we go into the time lapse I do want to say special thanks does go to Starbreeze for sponsoring this video. But more on that later. I found this particular spot just northwest of the starting location and I think this could be a great place for a village build so I've actually ensured there's enough space around the build to expand later on. In order to work the land I need to landscape it using the rake and for this I'm using the dirt road as this is going to help blend this into the path that runs through what will be our village. Now once we have the dirt spread we do need to think about the foundations. Personally I like to use stone as it makes the build feel a bit more supported to me. But always consider how much space that you're going to need. Often planning for more space in a build is better as it saves you having to add mismatched builds later on. And if you're someone who likes to strategize where to place buildings for optimum efficiency, then you may be interested in today's sponsor, The Tribe Must Survive. There is currently a demo out for this game for Steamfest. You can find the link to it in the description below. But this roguelike survival game starts you off with a small tribe that you slowly have to grow into a thriving village. You'll have to find food, medicine and shelter for your people, however you'll also need to provide enough wood not only to build your tribe but to also burn the fires at night to keep your people safe from the shadows and sustain the development of your tribal village. You may even find yourself exploring the neighboring tiles, but do be careful, every action in this game has its consequences, and you'll find your tribesmen frequently vanishing in the darkness or going insane, which forces you to develop new strategies for the many events that do take place in this game, whether that's other tribesmen wanting to be accepted within your tribe or trying to survive the floods or even the eclipse. The game is pretty easy to learn the basics to, but it's really hard to master. And all of this is packaged in a beautifully dark comic style and a fun challenge to try and overcome. So how many days will you survive? Find out in the demo or wishlist the game as it'll enter early access on the 22nd of February. The link is in the description below. Returning to Entrouded, when it comes to the build I try to stick with two to three materials that complement one another. For this it's rough stone, refined wood and half timber. But you will see me playing with other materials as well just because I want to experiment a bit and play around with different pieces. Once I have the ground floor in place I start to work on the next story, adding a border around. This helps the build pop just that little bit more, but in the end I do change the material because I feel it just doesn't work for this. Quite often it's easy to build lots of similar looking buildings, so another thing that I try to do is add some kind of specific detailing to each build. For this one I play about with this checkered floor for the bedroom done by alternating single pieces of half timber and refined wood. And now I love the look and if you're interested I will actually do a guide on design tips such as this later on but it is a lot more work than is really necessary. Now finishing this I do segment the middle floor into three. We have the bedroom, the bathroom and then the landing and I also add a little curtain around the bottom of the wall as it adds a little bit of depth to the inside of this build. At this point I considered adding another level to this build but instead opted for a peaked roof with space for an attic. Perhaps I'll convert this later on to a magic storage area but for now it can just be for storage. I think the biggest struggle that I have in this game is roofing and what would really help thinking about it is a way to lock the build, let's say hologram, in place prior to placing them. That way we can just check that it's in the right position. I also, you can see here, confuse the build materials as it's getting dark for the roof. So I do correct this after and then after the roof's finished I actually go and replace the wooden border with tarred wood. Uh, I just 
just feel it looks much better. Also on the ground floor, you can see that I've used a mixture of both stone and wood for the walls. This breaks up the build a little bit more, and I even use the polished stone to make the entrance just feel a little bit more grandeur. Interestingly though, I do experiment here with the different roof types and various placements have allowed me to do this pretty cool looking entrance. We're now looking at the chimney and you'll notice that where I intend to put the chimney I've added a stone wall up the whole side of the build. This just makes the chimney feel a little bit more supported for me and a little bit more realistic. Also by protruding outwards from the build and finding areas in which we can do this around the whole build adds a bit more depth to it and makes it feel more structured and more detailed and intricate. It's something that I love doing with all my builds and definitely recommend giving it a go in your future builds. Given how the roofing responds differently according to its placement and the material that's used, I actually tried using the slate here to border the ground floor windows. I'm really happy with how they look and considered actually replacing the main entrance roofing with these because it looks so good. I also added flowers to the window frame to make it feel a little bit more cozy before adding some more depth to the front of the build using the stone beams and the polished stone pillars to to frame the ground floor walls. Once done I then placed the straw coverings over the top windows but I think I'll probably change these as it does stand out in comparison to the rest of the, the build. It doesn't blend that well. I then focused on landscaping the garden adding a walkway through as well as a flower bed against the um, the lower wall and a few vegetable patches in front as well. Now for the walkway I am using the rough sandstone blocks. I use this just because it blends in really well with the dirt road, but normal stone blocks can work just as well here. You don't need to use fertilized farm soil or farm soil for that matter for the garden, but I do like how the darker soil kind of pops against the rest of the build. I do have a little issue here though with the rake towards the side of the build. Um, the way that I fixed this was by removing and then replacing the terrain and then running the rake over it again. And after this I continued the walkway around the side of the build before planting a selection of colourful and different height um, veg and foliage. For a little bit more character for the build, I placed a barrel in the corner at the front. This just makes it feel a little bit more homely and lived in. And you'll see me adding a lot more details like this to the rest of the build when it comes to the interior decoration, which I'll show shortly. After all this though, I added a little fire pit at the front to light the area at night. And then we have the well at the end. Although thinking about it, the well would probably be better suited towards the back of the left hand section here. The last thing that I need to do though is add the vegetable patch at the front which I'm going to have to do some more landscaping for to get it to work and then do a little border around the front of the build. As it stands I'm pretty happy with how this house is taking shape but if you would like to see this as part of a village or even a town then do let me know in the comments below. Next let's move on to the interiors. Here we're working on the internal fireplace that we worked on with the chimney earlier. Here you can use the fireplace pieces but I like to add actual fire stands to these by placing them slightly below the surface. Um, or alternatively, I'll add the cooking pots here. This just personalizes the build a little bit more and I then start making this feel like a, a cozy little seating area. I always find with the fireplace, it's kind of the focal point for the room. So I do try to spend quite a bit of time on the mantelpiece here just to get it to feel right. And you can see that we're using a mixture of stone. I think this is the polished stone block that we use and then we use the regular stone block just to top it off later on but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I add furnishes followed by a few candles just to light it a little bit more. At this point we focus on the kitchen area. Here I add a stove area as well as an oven to the side of this and underneath the stairs I decide to create a little pantry for storage. 
I then focused on the downstairs dining area. For this, I'd love to add more carpets as the stone floors do feel pretty cold. Perhaps I can look at removing the floor and then replacing it with maybe wooden planks later on. I do try to add chandeliers to this, but I realized that the ceiling is just too low for this and so we have to stick with candles on the table and with the spare benches that we have I make the fireplace a little bit more welcoming then I add shelves and bookcases to fill the area so it doesn't feel so empty I also added another barrel because we had one spare and some crates by the kitchen as extra storage Moving upstairs, I started on the bathroom. The space feels a little bit on the big size for now, but feels pretty welcoming with everything that we need. I wanted the bedroom to feel quite spacious so that we could actually show off the checkered floor that I spent so much time doing. And I also wanted a personal fireplace for my character to, I guess, sit by and maybe read once in a while. Not that we can, it would be great if they add that into the game. For the landing area, I've added banisters around the side, followed by a bit more decoration just to fill the space. We have a little seated area in the corner with a hand spindle. For some reason, this floor felt particularly dark, so I did end up adding more candles to the area, both along the wall, but also on the table side, as well as a standing torch by the banister as well. I then added some bookcases and some more storage underneath the staircase before adding a side table in the corner at the top of the staircase. We then had the attic. I just wanted to fill that with any excess furniture that I had and storage. And then I went around and filled out all the windows with actual window pieces and it occurred to me given that I had so many spare pieces that maybe we could clip these together to create some kind of um, trellis for the the garden and I'm really happy with how it looks so I, I ended up tearing them down I thought we could do maybe an arch but then I realized that wouldn't work and decided to just put that against the vegetable patch near the entrance so do look at the various items that you have and find different ways to use them but that's it. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I did building it. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up and let me know what you'd like to see in the next one. Should we do another build like this? Should I do a guide on various tips that I recommend when decorating? Let me know. Also, I would like to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Starbreeze, for The Tribe Must Survive. Do check out the Steam link in the description below. And I also want to say thank you to all of our patrons who let this happen. Happen. Most notably our solo clips Patreon, Fireflesh, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Jenny. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.